Did you know that in the US, nearly 9 out of 10 people with chronic kidney disease don't even know they have it? Which is not good because just like with most diseases, but especially kidney disease, the earlier you catch it, the earlier you can treat the underlying cause and prevent further damage. But what most people don't realize is that kidneys leave quiet clues about their health all over the body, like in your skin and your nails and even your breath. So if you know what to look for, you can spot problems early, which will help you preserve the precious kidney function. And that's exactly what I want to go over in this video is the top 10 signs that you need to watch out for to spot kidney disease as early as possible. But as you watch this, pay attention to the context because some of these signs, if you have them, they don't automatically mean you have kidney disease because there are many other conditions that present the same way and there may be some overlap. And if you do have any of these, definitely check in with your doctor as soon as possible. And at the end of the video, I'll go over important lab tests that you need to get to get the most accurate assessment of your kidney function. And you may have to ask your doctor about this test as it's not routinely ordered on a standard panel. So the first sign of kidney disease that I want to talk about actually surprises a lot of people and it's your breath. Your breath odor can tell you a lot about how your kidneys are doing. When your kidneys work well, one of the many things that they do is filter out nitrogen and ammonia compounds that your body just accumulates from breaking down protein. But when kidney function drops, now these waste products start building up in your bloodstream. So then your lungs try to help by pushing some of those waste products out as you exhale. And that changes the smell of your breath. So here's what it looks like. As your ammonia levels rise, you get an accumulation of waste products like dimethylamine or trimethylamine and other volatile organic compounds or VOCs. And since your kidneys are not able to process all that waste, your body pushes them out as you breathe out. And that creates something called uremic fetor, which smells like urine or ammonia. And this usually shows up in more advanced stages of kidney disease. And it's not just the odor. If you have this, you may also get unpleasant metallic or chemical taste in your mouth to where everything just tastes off, like your toothpaste or your food or your coffee. Now let's talk about some of the signs that you get at earlier stages of kidney disease. And one of them is waking up multiple times at night to pee. And another name for that is nocturia. And this may start showing up even before your blood tests look abnormal. Now, this happens because if your kidneys are not functioning properly, they have trouble concentrating your urine. So if your urine is less concentrated, then your bladder fills up much faster, which means you have to empty it more frequently. And there's another reason for this. When your kidneys are damaged, it becomes more difficult to maintain salt and fluid balance, which is typically a very tightly regulated process. So because of this, more fluid stays in your tissues during the day, especially in your legs. And when you lie down at night, all that excess fluid should back into your bloodstream and your kidneys just try to clear it by making even more urine which then gives you more nighttime output now if someone's waking up several times at night to pee that does not automatically mean there's a problem with your kidneys uh, there are many other causes for nocturia like prostate issues, or it could be overactive bladder. For some people, it could be diabetes or heart failure. And there's also data that points to obstructive sleep apnea as a cause for frequent nighttime urination. So lots of potential causes, but early kidney disease is definitely something that should not be overlooked. Now, another clue that may point to kidney disease is actually found on your nails. And one classic finding that we're taught in medical school is called Lindsay's nails, or some people refer to it as half and half nails. So you can spot those if if you see nails that are divided into two distinct horizontal bands, bottom part looks reddish and brown and the top part near the cuticle is opaque and pale and this whitish part usually occupies anywhere from 20 to 60% of the nail bed. Now we actually don't fully understand why this happens. Some speculate that this color change is due to the uneven blood flow in the nail bed capillaries, which is what causes the discoloration. And the reddish brown part is thought to be due to increased deposition of melanin in that area. Now if you ever spot this, that does not automatically mean you have kidney disease because you can see half and half nails in other conditions like cirrhosis or Crohn's or or this can even appear in otherwise healthy individuals. So if you notice this, just know that it warrants further workup with your physician and it does need to go beyond just your kidney function. Now, let's talk about some signs of kidney disease that you can also notice on your skin. And one of the most common things that can happen is dry skin, which another name for that is xerosis. So this is where you may see dry and scaly and rough patches on your legs and your back and your chest. And dry skin with kidney disease happens for several reasons. One, your kidneys 
roots are not able to regulate minerals like calcium and phosphate properly, which then affects skin health. And two, kidney disease can often lead to reduced and shrunken sweat glands, which then decreases the skin's natural moisture and it causes dryness. And the third reason is, since your kidneys are not filtering waste products as efficiently, some of it builds up and leads to intense itching, or another name for that is uremic pruritus. And this itch gets worse as the kidney function deteriorates. In fact, this can get pretty taxing for people that have end-stage disease on dialysis. So this is why it's so important to preserve your kidney function as much as you can. And you have to get started as early as you can. Now, another sign of kidney disease is brown spots or hyperpigmentation, where you get patches that look tanned or have darker complexion, especially on the sun-exposed areas. And this happens because when your kidneys slow down, it's not just the minerals they can't filter. They're also having trouble filtering hormones. And one of these hormones is MSH or melanocyte secreting hormone. And MSH controls melanin, which is that pigment that gives your skin its color. And if melanin production rises, you get darker patches, especially in places like your face or your neck and your arms. Now, some people with kidney disease also get little crater-shaped bumps with a rough plug in the center. And these are called acquired perforating dermatoses. They look like the skin is pushing something out because that is exactly what is happening. When your kidneys can't keep up filtering waste products in the urine, a lot of that gets accumulated in the skin, which then irritates the tissue. So the body tries to remove the damaged material by pushing it upward, which is what gives you that small bump with a central core. Now, it's not just kidney disease that causes these. You can also see those with liver disease and low thyroid function, and even with certain cancers. But just like with many other signs in this video, this requires a prompt workup with your doctor. Now we talk about the changes in your nails and your skin and your breath, but there's also a lot of signs on the inside and changes in how you feel, because that often appears even before any of these other changes we talked about. And these symptoms start as mild and they build up slowly. And most people explain them away as stress or lack of sleep or getting older, but it could also be your body trying to tell you that your kidneys are struggling. So the first one of these is fatigue. One of the many jobs of your kidneys is to help control red blood cell production. And they do this through a hormone called erythropoietin. But when kidney function is reduced, well, the signal to produce more red blood cells goes down. So your bone marrow is now making fewer and fewer red blood cells, which then in turn slows down how much oxygen is delivered to your organs. So basically you get anemia and all the things that we see with anemia, like feeling tired or having difficulty with exertion. So you get fatigue or winded just with light exercise or going up a flight of stairs. Now, another sign to watch out for is muscle soreness. And this one can show up even at early stages of kidney disease. And that's because your muscles need a lot of minerals to function properly. So minerals like sodium and potassium and calcium and phosphate. And these minerals can start drifting out of optimal or normal ranges as your kidney function declines. And even small changes can irritate your muscle cells and will cause them to misfire, which then leads to muscle soreness even after normal activities and not even strenuous exercise. So this may show up as feeling tight or achy, but for no clear reasons. And as kidney function declines even further, well, this moves from soreness to clear muscle cramps, especially at night when you may wake up from calf cramps or foot cramps. And once again, due to that mineral and electrolyte imbalance, because you need just the right proportion of calcium and magnesium and potassium to first initiate the muscle contraction and then to complete that muscle relaxation. Now, just to be clear, many other conditions and even medications can cause muscle cramps, but early kidney disease is often overlooked as one of the potential causes. And if kidney disease goes unnoticed for too long, this is where we may start getting into issues like muscle wasting. And this happens because when kidneys lose function, it becomes increasingly difficult to maintain the correct level of acidity in your body. And as acid starts building up in the blood, well, your body tries to compensate for that by breaking down your own muscle tissue to buffer that acid. And if your kidneys are not doing well, well, then you get these ripple effects that go beyond your acid at base status. So we start running into things like increased inflammation and oxidative stress um, and all those things inhibit muscle synthesis. And you also get hormonal disturbances like low testosterone and low growth factor. And you may even get vitamin D deficiency. So all of that combined further slows down muscle regeneration. So as you can see, the kidneys sit right at the center of many processes that are absolutely vital to almost every function of your body. And once kidneys start deteriorating, well, then you get this domino effect that you can 
can see throughout the rest of the body and all of your other organs. So this is why spotting these signs early is so important. Once the kidney function drops, it becomes very difficult to restore it. So in many of these cases, the goal is to catch it early and figure out what's driving the damage so that we can reverse it and preserve as much of the kidney function that's still there. Now, this is not a comprehensive list of all the signs by any means. And what complicates this further is for many people, there are no signs or symptoms when it comes to early stages of kidney disease. So that is why it's so important to get regular checkups with your medical provider. Now, most physicians only check a lab test called creatinine to assess kidney function. And creatinine usually comes as part of the basic metabolic panel or comprehensive metabolic panel, at least in the US. And creatinine is a good and standard test, but it's often not enough. Creatinine can be affected by your muscle mass and your hydration status. And most importantly, creatinine-based calculation of your kidney filtration status doesn't identify a problem often until it's after a lot of the damage has already started happening. So this is why I started recommending pairing creatinine tests with another lab test called cystatin C. Using cystatin C will help you pick up kidney dysfunction much earlier than if you're using creatinine. And studies have shown that cystatin C has higher sensitivity and better diagnostic accuracy for early kidney function decline compared to creatinine. Now there's definite benefits and drawbacks to both of these tests. So if you wanna learn more, check out this other video I made where I go over cystatin C and a few other lab tests that everyone should know about, but many don't because they're not routinely ordered by your doctor. I hope this was helpful. Stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.